Hello everyone, my name is Jesse, and welcome back to another Bakugan custom paint. Uh, this one's going to be more of a tutorial, but um, I'm going to hopefully be making a Bakugan that looks like this. So a, a custom painted Wavern, so like show accurate colors and everything. Uh, my plan is to make one even better than this using this one. Um, so the goal is to not make it look like this, uh, but more like this. Um, so essentially I got this Wavern through a, a trade. Um, if you've seen my previous video, I did a trade with a seller, and this was a freebie he included in it. Uh, he said he recently got a lot of like Bakugan that had been like poorly drawn on and were basically ruined, and he said he was going to trash them, um, but he decided to give them to me because he knew that I did custom paints, and uh, he gave it to me for free, and I'm, I'm kind of curious to see if I can, uh, can fix this, because as we can see now, it's in pretty rough shape. Uh, let's see if I can get some close-ups on it for you. So yeah, uh, it looks like it was just gone out with uh, purple and pink Sharpie, probably. Um, it's got some smudging here and, and all this stuff. So hopefully I can just fix that with some spray paint and a good like rubbing to get some maybe some of this marker off. Um, yeah, I'm going to basically be doing a whole video on how to custom paint a Wavering. So if you ever want to custom paint your Wavering, this is going to be the video for you. Um, so one thing to note that I noticed while like checking out my waverns and everything is that this wavern has no screws there It's just like a flat piece of metal right there. Whereas this one has screws So lucky for me now this one which for some reason is different not sure why I can um, get the feet off so I can have a little bit better time uh, Painting this so that's fun um, The G power has been marked out. It kind of looks like it says like 1210 or something. I'm not really sure uh, and then other than that, like the chaos symbol has been blacked out and all that. Um, it, it does close rather well, so at least that's a good thing. We're going to try and keep it like intact for the most part. So yeah, it rolls in everything and it, it does like open rather well. Yeah, so it's not too big a deal. And like my waiver here, she rolls and, and everything. And she rolls and does all that stuff just as easy so it's not too big a deal but yeah so uh without further ado let's get started on this waiver all right so the first thing i want to do is I've, I've already examined this pretty decently but um i do want to like take note of everything so we're gonna have three screws here which are gonna lift the the, the back part here this the bottom part from the body uh, the rest of the body and then i also happen to have two screws here on the feet to take the feet out your waiver may not have this. Um, if it doesn't, you're just gonna have to do the paint. You're just gonna have to paint over it as carefully as you can. Uh, but most of the steps should be relatively similar. Um, so yeah, and we'll get into how to disassemble it and everything in just a little bit. The first thing I wanna do is try and maybe clean this a little bit because mine has a lot of marker on it. I don't believe this is necessary because I can probably just spray paint over it and not have to deal with it. But I am kind of scared that it might mess with the paint or something so I am gonna give it an attempt here uh, yeah so clean your waiver this is an optional step but it's probably gonna help you and, and benefit you in the long run so let's see if we can uh, uncover some long lost details okay guys so I'm just using some isopropyl alcohol here this is 70% I don't really think it matters and then I've got paper towel here to the side and I'm essentially just going to be trying to get a little bit of alcohol onto here as you can see i got a little bit too much but that's fine and i'm gonna attempt it might be better in ball form to try and do this and just attempt to get some of this off if i can so it does seem like it's coming off that's fantastic and essentially all i'm gonna do here is just try and rub and get as much as i can off okay so i gave it my best shot trying to clean it um especially in these wings here is a bit difficult but uh i got you know the, the worst of it off and you can see there's still some of that gold in there which is the original coloring but i honestly could have been doing this for days and uh I'm, i couldn't even uncover the g power quite all the way it's the g power is still kind of hidden and it's getting scuffed away by the the isopropyl alcohol too so um yeah at this point i'm just going to spray paint over everything anyways because wavern has to be entirely white um, as the first coat so hopefully that won't show through and we'll just be able to paint right over it, which is what I'm hoping for. Uh, so first step now, before we even begin painting, we've cleaned her, um, is to disassemble. 
I prefer to take pictures as I go. So I've already taken pictures of what Waver looks like. Um, specifically, all of these different tiny little springs. There's one there, there's one on the other wing, and there's also one kind of in her neck right there, and then on the back. Um, so I don't believe th those pieces are going to really be taken off in this paint, but it's always good to have that be like take pictures of that so you know what it looks like, or at least have like I have another Wavern up there that I showed at the beginning of the video that I can use as reference in case something goes wrong and I need to reassemble. So now we just need to take all the screws out and I'm gonna be using a, a screw like this. It's a flathead screwdriver. It comes in a set that I got at Walmart. Um, it's called a Hyper Tough 44 piece precision bit set. Um, as long as you have a flathead screwdriver or some kind of screwdriver that can take these tiny little screws out, then you're good to go. Uh, so essentially all I'm gonna start doing here is screw them all out. So one, two, and three, and then after that, I'm going to take a look inside and then we'll screw out the feet. Okay, so I have gotten all the screws off on the top. I put the screws in a safe location and I'm going to slowly lift off to take a look at what we got underneath. Um, so a lot of Bakugan work like this is essentially you have a magnet attached to a little spring, if you can see right there. And um, that essentially just pushes this, these little lever pieces up and they attach right there, which keep the back of gun in place and then out of place, depending on if it's on a magnet or not. Uh, so that's fairly simple mechanics to most back of gun. And uh, yeah, so not too bad there. Um, do take note of the positioning it's in. So I know for a fact that this piece back here so there's one, two, and then this middle piece is in the back. So this is the back of Wavern. So the back of her head would be over here. The front and her wings opening would be up here in this area right here. Um, so I would take a picture of this just to make sure I know the positioning for later. <clears throat> and uh, so yeah, this piece is going to come out entirely. Uh, it needs to be kept in a safe location, so I'm going to leave it with the screws. And yeah, so I do want to take a look inside here to see where these screw bits are. So it seems like they're right there, and it seems like, honestly, they just pop right out. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm going to do, is just unscrew the feet right here. Um, so your wavering, again, may be different. It may not have the options to take out screws, um, but mine does. So for this tutorial, I'm going to do it. Okay. So those screws are the exact same as the rest of Wavern, and I hope that they just pop right out. Cool. So now that everything's disassembled here, um, it might be a bit easier for me to clean up some of it. So I may do that, just like run over it with the um, my, like a paper towel again to make sure it's got all this ink off. And um, yeah, so basically now we're pretty much ready to paint. Okay, I apologize if things start looking a little foggy. It's really humid where I'm at and my lens is like trying to glass over. But so for paint, I'm using flat white. This is Rust-Oleum's. Um, this is two times ultra cover paint and primer. Uh, don't use glossy. I've used glossy on my other one and glossy really sticks. Same with satin. Um, they tend to get real like gummy and sticky. And if you're trying to paint with other paints, it, it doesn't really work well unless you let it dry for like three days. Uh, so I'm gonna be trying flat white here. It's also probably gonna get me closer to a like plastic looking like wavering, you know, like instead of like it glossy and everything, it'll be more of like a plastic. I'm hoping it'll replicate, not sure. Um, but yeah, so I put mine on little wires just so they can hang and I'm gonna like spray them. I always hold my back again with my hand and spray just cause I have more like maneuverability. Um, it does get all over my hands. It's a very messy job. You can easily hang these from like little hooks or wherever and you've got in your house, but I hold mine. It's just a lot easier on myself. And um, yeah, so I'm going to spray these. I'm gonna try and get it all on camera if I can. And I'm also gonna do some close ups just so you guys can like take a look at it all. Okay guys, so I'm gonna be starting with a foot. You obviously can't see too much of that. Make sure you're in a place that's well ventilated and you've got somewhere you can spray. Make sure you get the whole the whole backer gone. You want everything on this wave room to be white. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure we get a good shake. And then I'm just going to do about six inches away and just go ahead and uh, spray it. And, uh, make sure you get the inside here. 
and uh, I'm doing a little an analyzing here and it seems like I've got a big clump I guess because I just the first time I've sprayed the paint uh, so I definitely need to wipe that off with a rag or something uh, so it's here yep and uh, kind of go over that again and uh, we're just gonna do that with everything And as you're spraying, you kind of just want to check all the important parts. So I know for a fact here, um, this piece is pretty good. And I'm going to do a close-up on it real quick here. Just so you can kind of see what I'm kind of aiming at here. Uh, so if you can see that there, you want it to be pretty white. So there is some spots kind of there that are yellow that I didn't quite get paint in. I may want to go back and touch those up, but they are going to be filled with purple for wavering later on with acrylic. So it might not be such a bad thing, but that's pretty much all we're doing is we're going to spray paint everything. As I'm, as I'm like spray painting here, I cannot stress enough uh, how long this needs to dry. You should seriously let this dry overnight. Don't get impatient and like start like trying to paint the really fine details um, because your paint may not actually be dry and uh, it'll be like gummy and you'll mess it up even more. So really like seriously give this a good amount of time to dry because if you don't, you'll regret it. So at least give it overnight. If you have a lot of time, like literally let it dry for a day um, and you can always check it. Spray paint does dry fast, but you really want it to be dry before you start working again. Uh, so I'm just gonna go and hang this. Yeah, we'll do another one. Now we're on to the really big piece, which is the main body here. Just try and get it everywhere we can. So make sure you really get the wings. And again, I'm doing this like holding it with my own hands just so I can turn it a bit easier and really get paint where I want it. Okay, and I really want to get it in the wings here. If you can see right there on the inside, that's going to be pretty important. Uh, so I'm going to try and do this here as easy as I can. And again, I'm staying about six inches away from my uh, Bakugan here, spraying a little burst. Try not to overspray because uh, you'll get like droplets and stuff, but that ink whatever that Sharpie was or whatever is really getting in my way. It's actually almost kind of bleeding through. So this audio might be terrible because it's on a different camera, but as you can see here, I um, painted it. It's glossy and everything right now because it's wet, but it will dry. Uh, you can see some of that ink leaking through there. Not, not the best. Um, I really wish I would have taken my time and gotten more of that ink off, but it is what it is. I'm gonna have to deal with it. Thankfully, this is in places where I will have to paint over anyways. So hopefully everything goes well. Okay guys, so it's been about 24 hours, I wanna say, since the paint dried. I did do two coats, just to let you know, that wasn't on camera. Um, once it started drying a little bit, I was like, I think it needs another coat, so I did. Uh, there's still some discoloration in certain parts. I couldn't get rid of that, it just bled through. And then another thing I did was, this is the piece that usually has the spring on it, and there's the magnet for the Bakugan right there. I ended up spray painting just these little like top pieces and like a little bit around it. In the Bakugan, the only thing that's gonna go through is um, this piece right here. So it's actually gonna end up going through Wavern right there. And um, I've just kind of spray painted those just to like make them blend in. And hopefully we won't have too much interference when opening the Bakugan later on. But uh, I'll kind of deal with that when it happens. So yeah, the paint job is pretty good. I really am a fan of the flat white. Uh, I'm not sure how much of this is going to show up on camera at all. There are a couple like minor flaws, like I think a good example is on this wing. There is some um, like, let's see if I can get it to focus, I'm not sure I can. Um, there is some like scuffing and stuff like that, that kind of um, doesn't look too great. But again, I can't really do much about that, that's just because that's how the Bakugan is. I think it was just like some debris or part of like the Bakugan actually not being fully like like the plastic was chipped or something. Um, so now what I'm kind of doing is getting these springs to work, um, especially in the wings here and like on Wavern's neck. 
They seem to be pretty good, but you can always take um, a sewing needle or something, like right here I have a sewing needle, and kind of try and get into those springs to try and loosen up some of that paint in there because paint does get kind of all over the place and um, get in those springs because some, some of them you can't cover very well and uh, just get her working a little bit better. Just trying to figure out where everything's scraping or anything like that. So you might have to take some time and do that. Sometimes it's okay and, and nothing really bad happens, um, but it will grind away some of that paint probably. I am using this Wavern to model off of. This is like show accurate colors. I looked up a picture of Wavern and copied the colors as best I could. It's not perfect because the paint I had um, was slightly more neon pink and, and purple than I'd wanted, but that's the only paint I have. So I'm just gonna kind of have to roll with it. Uh, get that Bakugan roll. Um, so yeah. Uh, we're just going to try and mimic that and some words of advice, let things dry. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't stop saying that enough. Um, so I'm going to be using some acrylic paint pens here. This is the, band, the, brand, this is the brand Paint Marker. Um, so here I have my purple and then in this pack I have uh, a, a really bright pink. Uh, I wish it was more pastel but it's what I got. And if you ever see them in stores they look like this. Um, it's just paint marker in like a little plastic thing. You can get them at most like art stores and whatever. Especially for like super, super tiny pieces on the feet here. Um, especially between these toes and on different parts of Wavering. I have found that taking this same sewing needle and putting it in like the sharp end into an eraser of a pencil and sticking it in there and then putting some of the, the paint you have from your, your like paint pens onto a plate actually helps kind of um, get some of them those small pieces because you can essentially use this as a tiny brush and just get like a dab of, of paint on the from the pen on here and use that as a tiny brush and then go in and um, start doing these super tiny lines just because sometimes these pins uh, get a little like they're kind of fat right here they get kind of big and um, Sometimes it's, it's good for like parts of the wings and stuff like here, but then there's super tiny pieces like the, these like neck ridge lines. I'm not sure if that's showing up on camera, but um, they get kind of more complicated. Uh, so that's essentially the plan. I'm going to copy this Wavern. I'm going to start with the feet because those are the smallest and work my way up. And uh, yeah, so if at any point you're like painting and you want to like kind of figure out the paint job. I'll kind of like turn this wave run around some just so you can see different like portions of it. And uh, hopefully that will kind of give you an idea. But I'll do like a whole showcase at the end that you can also look at. Um, so just copy this paint job if you'd like. You can do anything you want. I guess I'll just do like a time lapse of it and then maybe throw in some commentary. Not really sure, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Okay, so I have gotten the like toes done in this purple right here. I need to do the lining on these other bits right here, but I don't want to touch this wet paint, so it's probably a good idea to move on to something else. Uh, so I'm probably going to do some of the body parts, like the bottom of Wavern, and just keep using my little um, needle here, which has been super great, and uh, kind of try and fill in some other spots on here. And again, just mimicking the bottom, which is all purple. Uh, so it shouldn't be too many mess ups there. Okay, so as you can see, whoop, don't want to hit that too much. Um, as you can see here, there's a small mess up in the paint. Um, some of it just like smudge. So what I'm gonna attempt to do is take some of that same alcohol I used earlier and try and dab it away. Now what's difficult 
is this is white paint and it's mixing with purple paint uh, so sometimes trying to get that off is near impossible but it looks like with a little bit of love this is coming right off which is great as you can see there that's like a side painted and again i'm gonna let that rest i'm gonna put it down let it dry don't touch it because it'll make a mess <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, I finished up like the main part of the head. Honestly, it's not too bad, at least from like what I'm seeing on camera. I mean, if you look right up on it, let's see if I can get it like super close here. Right up on it, you can clearly see some flaws going on just because it's I'm using literally my hand. Basically just a, a big rinse and repeat thing you know I, i'll paint one piece let it dry come back and paint it again so like right now these feet are still looking pretty wet um so i'm probably gonna like leave them alone not touch them you know let them dry for like an hour or something and uh check it again so i have gotten quite a bit done trying to like wait around but i did manage to get things are still really wet um I did manage to get like some of this done. I'm trying not to touch it too much, but I want to show you guys. I did get, I did manage to get some of that painted and I'm just going to set that off to the side as well as the feet. Uh, so both feet are like fully painted, which is nice. So yeah, we, we got a lot done. I think I'm at a, a really good point where I need to start letting things dry pretty well because the next step is like the wings and the insides of the head, which get a little bit complicated, especially the inside of these wings, which is a nightmare. So we're just gonna have to take it slow again and probably use that, that uh, sewing needle because it really helps. <laughs> are mostly dry um, there's still a couple wet spots on them but I think I'm gonna go ahead and try and do some of the neck lining this part's gonna be very challenging obviously because as you can see on the neck there are these little holes those holes need to be white because that's how Wavering looks in the show uh, so it's gonna be a lot of like teetering around if you want to take a look here this is kind of what I'm hoping the neck's gonna look like, except maybe a little bit neater, because this one's pretty sloppy. Um, this one's turning out very well. I'm already like super excited about it. Now, I don't wanna get too close to the top of the head here, because this pin will end up like rubbing off and not getting like a, uh, it'll get on the head more than I want. So I'm gonna go back in later with the, the needle and get all that. looking like right now um, so basically the wavering is completely painted now 
Um, I'm going to let all this dry for a couple hours and then go back in with a white marker and use my sewing needle and kind of like get all these like extra little tough spots. Again, this is the this this white marker is for touch ups because it's going to be a completely different paint color. But there are certain spots that I definitely need to run through again. Um, but yeah, so I mean the pink's done um, aside for covering some stuff up. Okay, so everything's dried. The pink paint that I just finished painting is now dry and safe to touch. And now what I'm gonna do is take this little white marker I have and do like small touch-ups. So you can see, let me see if I can get a good close-up here. You can see on the wing, let me use this to point. You can see on the wing right here-ish, um, there is like, it looks like my pink paint messed up, but that's actually not the case. It was actually um, the marker from before that bled through the wing here. So I'm going to use this white marker here, go back in, do some touch-ups, and uh, maybe do a little bit of touching up kind of in this middle part here as well. But that'll be pretty much it. Once that dries, I'll kind of like, actually I can do this right now. What I can do is just kind of assemble it. I say that lightly. Kind of just put her slightly back together so you can kind of get an idea of what she's going to look like before all of the screws go back in and she's like operatable again. But it looks pretty solid. Uh, on this one, I added some black detailing, which I'm not a fan of. It was more just to cover up the flaws I had. But on this one, I don't think I'm going to add that black detailing just because it's kind of unnecessary. Um, I can leave this matte like it is, like this flat white and uh, this glossy. But I think I may go over it with a nice clear coat of glossy spray paint. But honestly, you can use whatever you want as long as you get it covered. I'm just going to go ahead and do that white detailing and I think I'll be good to go. So what I'm doing here is on all of the toes, just because they're so small, uh, sometimes the purple gets up on them. So what I'm doing is going with this white marker and kind of just rounding it out so that they look more spherical and um, like more of a round shape than kind of like crooked from where this um, purple paint goes in. If you actually do one, you'll kind of understand what I'm saying, but um, just trying to make them more toe-like and spherical than having like weird like cracky lines or like slightly off purple on there the paint job is done all right so i wanted to show you guys all the different details so that if you wanted to paint one yourself you can copy this if you'd like there is only one more step technically two one is optional so you have the option to clear coat this or put some kind of protective paint over it uh, to prevent future scratching if you decide to play with it or roll it or anything that you might want to do. So I, I for one, prefer to put a glossy clear coat on there just to make it shiny and protect all this paint that I just worked very hard on. And that is essentially the same thing as spray painting the Bakugan. All you're going to do is put them back on the wires, spray paint them with that glossy clear coat the same way you'd spray paint the white on there. Let that dry overnight and you should be good to go and then all you got to do is reassemble. So I am going to do that glossy clear coat uh, so I won't be assembling just yet but I want to take now to show you guys all of the different colors and details and all the fine tuning I did. So let's start with the feet. They're pretty much the easiest here. So here you see the feet. Um, and then here's the paint job for them. So these are all purple. The feet only have purple on them. As you can see the toes there. I did have to go in with a little bit of white paint later and kind of touch them up. But that is it. And as you can see on these very thin lines right here, I used a sewing needle. Um, hopefully you see some of that in the video. And then this foot is exactly the same. Uh, same paint job. They're all pretty similar. It looks pretty good from a distance but kind of the, the closer you get up to it, the more you kind of start noticing it's, it's a paint job and it's, it's really hard to paint really tiny stuff like this. Um, but that's the other foot. Here we have the main body. So as you can see here, main body, um, pretty, uh, pretty basic too, it's just purple. I have a lot of like small details on this as well. All these little dots were kind of a challenge. I think I have one where I, I kept messing up. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's right here, maybe? No, this one. Um, yeah, so I had to paint over this a lot because for some reason, like the purple kept bleeding onto the white here and it was causing me a lot of problems, but it looks good now. Um, again, like I said, close up, 
not so much, but uh, not too bad. I did paint most of this rim white because it does show on the outside of the Bakugan. So make sure you either spray paint this white or just paint over it with a marker like I did. I just took one of my white acrylic paint pens and went over it. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because it does hide some of it, but uh, it does also show a little bit of it as well. The inside, no need to uh, paint that too much. I didn't paint on the inside here because the spring and the magnet are going to go there, so I just didn't want to bother that. Next up is actually like the magnet piece. So um, let me get the spring here so I can show you what it looks like. Uh, so like the, the spring will actually go on the magnet here to let the, the back of the gun, like launch. The only thing I painted here were these three nubs. So as you can see here, it's sticking out some. That's what's it's gonna allow the Bakugan later to deploy. I painted those white because they do kind of stick up out of the body of Wavern here. Uh, so I can demonstrate it. They're kind of poking out right there, if you can see, and on that side. So here is the main body. So first off, let's take a look at the wings. Notice there is no attribute symbol because Wavern technically does not have an attribute symbol. She's one of the white ones, which means she has no attribute. So I just chose to paint over it. And also my attribute symbol on this after that one paint job, which was terrible, was on it. It, it just didn't, it was blackened out. So I just painted it white anyways. I could download a sticker and like print out a sticker and put it on there, but I don't see a point. It looks fine without it. Um, same with this wing. This one does not have the attribute symbol, so it's just uh, purple. And then, um, as you can see, the purple going up on the neckline here. It's pretty smooth for the most part. I'm pretty happy with that. It, it could not be much better. Um, well, it could, but it looks pretty good, at least uh, for what I could do with a sewing needle. <laughs> and then here's the top of the head. And then you go around here on the neck and the eyes. You notice the eyes are yellow. Wavering's eyes are yellow. And then all of this is a pink color. And um, as you can see here, all of these white dots are left white instead of being filled in because that's how it is in the show. Same on this side. And then down here, I painted this little piece purple. You can see it kind of sticks out on her right there. If you can see it at an angle, um, it kind of pops out. It, it kind of helps keep wavering like into the, her, um, her like bottom part. I just painted those purple because that's how it is in the, uh, the, the show. And then she also is supposed to have a purple part here in the middle, but the only place I could really paint it is either where her G power used to be or on this like little lip that she has, like right, kind of like right there where the, it like goes up a little bit to enter the rest of the Bakugan. And it was just too tiny and I didn't really feel like it was that necessary because the ball form in the show is slightly different from the actual toy, at least in this area. So I didn't bother touching that. Um, but everything else is white. Uh, as you can see here on the inside of the wings, that's pink too. And I did a decent job getting those little like, I don't know, the white lines there in on both sides. Um, if you look really closely, the wings are 100% not perfect. Uh, painting the inside of the wings is a pain and it's very hard to do. And um, it's just, it can't be perfect. So I'm going to go clear coat this. I'm not gonna film it because it's self-explanatory. It's literally the same exact things you did to spray paint it, just with a clear coat spray paint. So uh, yeah, just make sure your Bakugan's completely dry before you spray paint it, because before you clear coat it, because you might end up running some of the paint and you don't want it to smear or anything. Uh, but other than that, make sure you test your hinges and stuff and like all the wing stuff moves. Mine are a bit tight, but since I'm clear coating it, I'm gonna wait because that clear coat's gonna get sticky in there too. And um, I'm gonna have some issues with that. So I'm gonna have to go back in and probably use some like isopropyl alcohol to try and clear those little hinges and, and like wire us up a little bit. Uh, we'll see what happens when I um, test her after I've screwed her all together. Okay, everyone. So I'm back again. It's been about, I don't know, eight hours or so. Um, so I did clear coat the Wavern. Um, I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but there is definitely like a reflective light around it. That's just a clear coat. I did a glossy clear coat um, and it does kind of make it a little bit nicer. It matches all the paint and blends it all in really nice. Um, so now basically we're just going to make sure everything kind of moves and we will have to test this later when she's put all back together, but uh, we are going to reassemble. So I'm trying to think of the best way to do this it would probably be to put on the feet first okay that's nice that's in and then get our screwdriver i apologize if you hear anything there's thunder going on right now and i believe all the screws are the same size so don't worry too much about that um, and we're just going to screw in all the feet and with this because it's um it's on the feet here i want to make sure they're 
pretty tight, but not like overly tight, just so the feet can move rather well. I'll test that here in a minute. Okay, so now the feet are screwed in. This one took a lot of effort, um, but let's see here, we can get it open. This could be too tight. Uh, yeah, it looks like it did a little bit too tight. I'll have to loosen that just a bit. Uh, you don't want these screws too tight or else the feet can't open. Yep, okay. So uh, that's what it looks like. So I think that looks pretty awesome right there. Yeah, super happy. Uh, so we're gonna leave that like that. Then we need to take our spring that goes into this piece. And remember, this spring just goes right on and then goes right down in the middle here. And remember, this piece goes in the, the third back piece goes in the back there. And then all now we have to do is set Wavern on there and screw her back in. So this could take a second. Uh, I've got to line it up and everything. All right, heard a nice click. That's good. Ooh, lots of thunder. And uh, yeah, now we just screw that back in. Okay guys, so the Wavern is completely screwed in and I'm gonna give you guys like a final result here. Um, so as you can see, the gloss turned out really nice. Um, I'm pretty proud of this one. It looks super, super cool. Definitely better than my other one. Uh, here's my other one just for reference. They look very similar, but this one's just got so much black on it. Uh, pretty cool though. And um, I did do a little bit of like playing around with it. This one, the feet closed just fine, but when closing like the body, um, she has a very hard time reopening on the magnet. Um, this is due to just paint being like stuck in certain places. Um, and uh, it will, sometimes this fixes, sometimes it doesn't. You can always try and like get some of the paint out or like lubricate it in some way. As this is mainly a display piece, I'm not too worried, but in the future I may go in and like try and fix it some because like this wing here likes to get stuck on stuff. Um, it's definitely grinding on a piece of paint somewhere. But um, yeah, I'm super happy with how this turned out. It, it turned out amazing. Let me show you guys the ball form really quick. Yeah, just like, wow. <laughs> wow, that's all I can say. Um, yeah, so I will need to fix like the deploying. Um, it could just be that I need to readjust the magnet or something or tighten the screws. It could be, it could literally be anything. Yeah, guys, so that is Wavern. Yeah, so um, that's, what it, that's what it looks like. Ain't that cool? And I mean, this took like three days. I definitely took longer on this one than I've taken on most of my custom paints. But I mean, just look at the result. And like, obviously from here, you may not be able to see too many flaws. And like, that's a great thing. Um, I mean, there are a couple like things I wish I'd done a little better, but I mean, I'm working with such small bits that I can't complain too much. And I mean, now I have another custom Wavern, which is like amazing. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, and of course, subscribe for more awesome content. Feel free to ask me questions in the comments. I'll try and help. I'm hoping that this video does the, the, the Bakugan custom paints justice and um, it kind of explains what to do. And uh, as always, if you'd like this paint job, you're more than welcome to copy it. I've been doing like rotations of the Bakugan all throughout the video. So hopefully just by looking at this, you're able to like mimic and copy exactly what I did uh, to hopefully get yours to look similar to mine. Thank you guys. Peace out.